All right, hello everybody, welcome back to a reading ramble. It is September 30th. Hopefully I can get this up soon. If not, that's okay. I, I don't think I've finished a lot this month. I have been reading consistently. I'm trying to use natural light. I'm sorry about the glasses reflection. I've been reading 184 days as of today. Every single day I've sat down and read at some point, but I don't feel like I've finished many books. I've read like, you know, afternoon, evening, the caffeine thing's still going. Yeah, we're gonna go over, uh, some Japanese stuff at the end, as I did in the last two. Got a couple books finished. Okay, anyway, all I've finished this month is, as far as I know, as far as I can remember, the next book in the Mitch Rap series, which I read in like three days, it was very good, uh, Memorial Day. You, you see things coming, but you still wanna you still wanna know how they unfold. And then uh, I've also finished The Chalk Circle Man, which is like, I guess, a murder mystery kind of thing. Definitely had a twist at the end that I thought was pretty cool. Did not see it coming. I, I saw part of it coming and I was like, okay, yeah, there you go. And you know, this hypothesis that this character had was right. And then they flip it around on you. A while ago, my mom gave me the, the seventh book in the series. I didn't realize it was the seventh book until I finished it and looked it up and I was like, oh, I didn't know anything about this. They're originally in French, I think at some point, I wanna try and read them in French, but for now, English, not worried about French right now. Oh yeah, the, the main detective in this book, and this is me overthinking, of course, but he, he goes a lot off of intuition. And I just thought that was cool. Like he sometimes he would just wouldn't realize why he knew something or something, stuff like that. Like there was one character who always would rationalize things. And that was, that's me. The reflection is so annoying. All right, it's a little darker, but it's still reflecting. There's nothing I can do about it. And it was just, I don't know, it was a cool connection I made to my own little life. My initial battle of objective versus subjective. It appears not to have faded when it first erupted like, what, six years ago? <laughs> so my, my rationale of trying to make everything a rational choice versus my emotions being like, dude, this is a feeling and then I'll be like, okay, but we have to take time to dissect every single aspect of that feeling. And then, I don't know, not much to say about Mitch Rapp. It was still very engaging. Kyle Mills is doing a very good job at carrying the torch on those. The other book I've technically finished is the Japanese short stories book. I was reading like one every other day and then the last couple of days I just read one a day and then I read three in one day. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna finish this because these aren't very helpful. It was a good beginner resource like to practice reading, I think, but, and maybe if it was more, if I was more conscious and slowed down a bit, I would have gotten more out of it. But I would rather try and play a video game and read the dialogue or anything that shows up opposed to, you know, some book where it's like, or I have cousins and every year we play a game with our grandmother where we try to see whose name she remembers them. Like the stories themselves were just practice, but they weren't actually engaging them themselves. I think it's more practical to read actual visual novels and see the grammar and stuff that you recognize. And if you don't recognize vocab, you know, you can still pick out, uh, you know, what's a verb and whatever. Anyway, I, that's just the other book I finished this month. I found another book. Oh. I think I mentioned this, but this is gonna be, I think I wanna get to a point where I can you know, read this and comprehend for the N3 that I'm taking in December. I read real Japanese. It's like split between essays and English translations of those essays. A good learning resource, but it's also like actual, actual work, which I think is great. Works of Love. This is the third month I'm on it. I am 136 pages in, no, second month. Yeah, second, second month. I'm thinking of either or. I haven't touched either or. Page 136, um, there's highlights. Ready? Look at all those highlights. Um, at one point I was like, okay, I need to stop highlighting because it's taking away from my reading. But there are just things that I really like and I'm just like, I want to highlight it because maybe I want to come back for that specific part. And I, I kind of know I never will. There's a lot of talk about God and reference to Christianity. I have no nothing against that. It just funnels things for me because it's kind of like there are analogies drawn with, with you know, one's love to the neighbor versus one's love to God and how your love to God should supersede everything else. And I, I don't connect with that personally. So sometimes it makes things a little hard to understand. But on the flip side, when there's, you know, an emotional thing I kind of do understand, it kind of puts a part of, I guess in this case, Christianity into perspective for me. So it's just kind of like, I don't have any foundation there. So sometimes it's hard to draw things from that, but then there will be points where Kicker God kind of explains it, which then, you know, that helps. And I wrote down page 100. I've been thinking a lot about sitting down and just doing things. I made a VGT. You can check it out here. And I want to make a follow-up to that today about just sitting down and getting things done. Hydration check, by the way. And uh, this jumped out to me. So don't make promises. <laughs> In so many of my like uh, projects, and you can see this in almost any video I've done, I've always said, I'm gonna get this done by this time. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is this. And then it cuts to having done that, and then it's it's nothing even remotely like that. So there's, there's you lose a bit of power when you say something. And a promise itself, Kierkegaard kind of defines, sounds like four pages defining what a promise is. But a promise itself is something to be upheld. 
So when you know when you say yes to a promise, you're you're satisfying someone else and yourself. But if you say no, I'm not gonna do that, which to me is kind of like in the modern world, it's like if someone asks me to do something, I'll say, yeah, if I have time, or you know, I might get to that today. Because then when I do do it, it 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 feels better for me and hopefully for the other person because it's like, oh, he actually did it. He's reliable when I ask him to do these things. And if he says he's, he's if he has time, then he'll actually do it when he has time as opposed to, oh, he said yes. And then later told me he didn't have time. That's what it means to me, at least. Uh, you know, I'm learning about Christianity and kind of cool in the context of a philosophical, I don't want to say argument, but point maybe. So yeah, I'm still reading works of love. It's just you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta change it up a bit and apparently read two other books in six combined days. Uh, and then there's another book. Started this three days ago, I think, Into the Wild. It's a story about a guy, some dude. His name was Christopher McCandless. He dies. It's not a spoiler. It literally says that on the cover. They find his body, I should say, in some like abandoned bus in Alaska, in the Alaskan bush or whatever in Alaska. The Alaskan bush is in Alaska. Wow, no way. I thought that I was gonna pick this up because it, it's kind of small. I had it for a while. I think my mom gave it to me from one of the books she had. The pages are kind of relatively dense, I guess, compared to other books, but I thought I was gonna like pick it up and be like, and eh, this is whatever. But it, it effectively is, there's a guy who wrote an article about Christopher, or he goes by the name Alex when he's hitchhiking through, you know, the US. So I'll say Chris and Alex, they're the same person. But he he writes about Chris, Alex dying, John Krakauer, that is. Uh, and he writes his article and it becomes really big. So he, he kind of traces Alex's whole journey from Virginia, you know, abandoning his, not, eh, donating his college fund to charity pretty much, not being in contact with his parents and hitchhiking across the country and all these adventures. I originally was gonna not talk about this book for this month's reading ramble, just kind of mention it. But two things, the other day I looked up plane tickets to Alaska because I was like, that'd be kind of cool. I don't want to go like live in, live in the woods. I think this is a good book on how to live. Every kind of chapter so far has been uh, the article, the writer who he's gone to talk to people who bumped into Alex on his journey, gave him a ride when he was hitchhiking or gave him a place to stay for a little bit. The one with Franz, uh, Ronald Franz, which is a pseudonym, is really heart-wrenching. And I do not use that word lightly or that term heart-wrenching. So Alex wrote a letter to this this Franz guy. He's 80, Franz was like, there's, there's a lot more info. I'm not gonna re regale you the whole tale. I got my highlighter out and I highlighted this page. The only context that's important is that Ron is like an 80 or so year old guy Guy and he's in a very safe, comfortable job kind of thing. Uh, and so Alex writes him this long letter and says, quote, so many people live within happy circumstances and yet will not take the initiative to change their situation because they are conditioned to a life of security, conformity, and conservatism, end quote for now. So security is having something that you can rely on. To me, at least conformity is something where you can fit in with everyone around you. And conservatism is doing things because that's how they should be done, how they've always been done. Resuming the quote, all of which may appear to give one peace of mind, but in reality, nothing is more damaging to the adventurous spirit within a man than a secure future. And I think for a while I've been searching for security in many ways. This is the one that has really has me thinking because, you know, I have a job now, something I enjoy that's challenging. It is it is secure. A part of the reason why I chose this is because it's a bit secure in the, in the volatile world of today. But I don't want to kill my adventurous spirit. And so in, in a way, I've still embraced some of the more nomadic aspects of my life. So I'm, I'm still, you know, I sleep on a futon with a tatami mat. I have pretty minimal amount of clothes. They can pretty much all fit in a duffel bag. I still use a laptop. I haven't gotten like a PC or a really nice computer. I abandoned that idea. I talked about this in my Seattle part two vlog, but I got this L desk and two monitors. That's kind of what I mainly shelled out on because I've always kind of wanted this type of setup and it's great. I, I really appreciate it more not having had it for a while, but I've always wanted to just like grow roots somewhere. And I think maybe that's not in my nature and I shouldn't fight that, that nature. And so into the wilds, I'm not gonna go hitchhiking. I'm not gonna, maybe, you know, maybe one day if I totally have one existential crisis that goes a little too far. I think I wanna go to Alaska, maybe not in the winter, October, November, and December are gonna be already a lot of traveling for me. If there's an open weekend, I might just be like, hey, can I take Monday off? I'm eating to Alaska <laughs> and just stay there for a little bit. Maybe just go totally offline for three days, have a little retreat of my own. I'm apparently just going everywhere that Owl City saw are about. That's that. I haven't been reading much of the visual novel for Toradora. For my Japanese reading, I have been um, doing Boom Pro reading online. When I took the <clears throat> practice and floor exam, my reading comprehension is garbage. I really want to actively work on that. And light novels are just hard to gauge. I guess I just said they're better <laughs> than the simple short stories. But yeah, let's go ahead and sort out August books, eh? First one is Into the Wild. I'll definitely finish this. 
uh, maybe the next two or three days over the weekend. It's just, it's an extreme version of what part of me wants to do kind of thing. And then there's Works of Love. We'll keep reading that, of course. We have Toradora. I'll try to still read that. Hopefully by the end of October, I can repeat back that I've, I'm gaining a good comprehension because I'm starting to sprint through the N3 grammar in I think a week or so. And the N4 grammar, I'm doing 92 Anki cards a day. So that's fun. How to disappear. This piqued my interest a while ago for no particular reason, I guess, aside from the fact that it's just notes on invisibility in a time of transparency. And lastly, Seneca's letters from a Stoic. Uh, I really want to get back into Stoic philosophy. I've kind of become detached from it. Yeah, so maybe that after works of love. Cool. And then the essays book. So, and then either or is still on there, but yeah. Boom. Oh yeah, I also want to read game design books. Uh, I think the only way to learn is to do, you know, if I want to make a game, make a game, do it. But that's not something I'm prioritizing right now. Twitless is the first programming thing I want to do. And, you know, to experiment with this whole getting things done, sitting down and just doing it. So anyway, in the meantime, maybe I can read that game design book. Just read slow parts of it. Once the Japanese exam is over and I sort out how I'm going to continue practicing Japanese, if I'm going to have to retake the N3, probably, you know, how to fit everything in together so that I can make Japanese a priority, but still, you know, not allocate two and a half hours a day to it. <laughs> that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching this month's Reading Ramble. If you have recommendations on book, leave them down below. Let me know what you're reading if you end up going for any of these. Make sure you join the Discord so we can talk about it. Um, if someone ends up you know, reading Works of Love and is three chapters ahead, I will read that a little more than I do right now. Weird rash in the forehead. Great. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in the next one.